because we don't know we are in the last day there are five things you must survive in the last day the first is what affliction he said they will deliver you to be afflicted this affliction is called persecution and i told us yesterday the cross that jesus said we should carry is not sin and sickness it's persecution the body of christ will be persecuted and so the church we are raising now is a warrior church so that everybody like in the days of the first apostles you can pick a deacon from church and he will enter a city and conquer the whole city and even if he has to die there it's an honor i read the story of the moravian brothers they were so passionate about god and they needed to enter the nation of france but there was no way they would be giving allowance to france so the only way they could enter france was to sell themselves as slaves and when they sold themselves as slaves they gave the money for charity and they were carried to france as slaves because that was the only way they could smuggle the gospel to the nation of france but you go to church every day and all you are taught is how to succeed how can you stake your neck for the kingdom that's why we remain infantile what jesus said is you will be delivered to be afflicted those are witnesses it's not everybody there are some that will run for their life but there are many that will say i will stand here to the end if god sent me to, to ghana i will be here even if everybody leaves ghana i heard bishop who said something he said if everybody's running from nigeria i will be the last i will stand here till i die because we don't pursue things we pursue the kingdom we pursue christ and his government you will be delivered to be afflicted number two he said you shall be killed that's the second thing we endure in the last day this is why the gospel of the last day is the cross of jesus christ and the cross is not a wound the cross is a testimony of total surrender the cross is a testimony of total submission to the government of jesus christ even when it is at the expense of everything you stand for including your life they say you will be delivered to be killed unless you don't want to be a witness if you just want to be an ordinary christian that's good continue with what you are doing but if you want to be a witness that god can trust and commit kingdom to you must pass these five criteria he said you will be delivered to be killed and he went further he said you shall be hated by many nations for my sake and then he went to number three he said many shall be offended because there shall be betrayer of one another so the third thing you will enjoy is betrayer the people you labor with over time they will be the one to send you off you will discover that you can't find men of integrity anymore because their bellies have become their gods so the man that you thought you invested and labored with a day will come he will look at you he will sell you for 30 pieces of silver they say you will be betrayed but one thing you must learn how to endure and survive is offense refuse offense from entering your heart because these are requirements of the last day so first of all you must survive affliction you must survive death you must survive offense and betrayal and then he went to number four he said there will be iniquity he said because iniquity will abound the love of many will wax cold this is why today immorality is a natural part of us so now they have what they, they have different kinds of counseling session where pastor try to manage things because what is happening in church if he says it the church can't continue instead of us ministers to now be troubled and teach the people the way of righteousness and to teach them the terror of god we come to church every day we are interested in money so we want to take money from them and so long as the person can bring money it doesn't matter if it's a thief it doesn't matter if it's a fornicator the goal is to take the money and when we take the money we don't care about their soul but what we don't know is that god will ask us that question how can you be pastoring ten thousand people and the city doesn't feel your impact and every time you come you are happy you are snapping overflow that 10,000 people came to church. You are talking to 10,000 people and the territory is still in darkness. It means you are failing in your office. Because Jesus spoke to 500 people and the Bible said, These be the men that turn their walls upside down. How come you are talking to 10,000 people and that city have not felt the impact of revival? Because what you are feeding them with is milk. You have not given them strong meat. If you talk to 10,000 people and you tell them the right thing, that city will be on fire for Jesus Christ because everyone will become a witness and the nation will be turned upside down for God. But we have a generation where people brag in the fact that church is mad, but they are not moved when the territory is in darkness. God forbid that you have the influence over 10,000 people and the territory is in darkness. God will ask you what you have been telling them because if you tell them the gospel of the kingdom, they will change that territory. The Lord of many will watch home because iniquity will abound. But you see, most of us, we are already cold. I told you yesterday, that's why the temperature of our individual prayer is weak. Now, when we come to pray, we need to play chants at the background to pray. Warriors, we need a chant to pray. What if God sends you to a wilderness? What will you do? You don't know that in your spirit is a song of songs. There is a chant that is in your spirit because you are connected to the river of eternity. You are waiting for... Because iniquity will abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And Jesus went further and said, But they that endure to the end. So the last battle is the battle of endurance. The greatest warfare in the spirit is the battle of attrition. The battle of attrition is not the devil doesn't come to win you, he comes to win you out. 
so he's not hitting you to go down he hits on you on one spot until you give up the goal is to weaken your conviction so that when you are weak no matter what happens you can't be restored it's called the battle of attrition it's to wheel you out but jesus said we must fight that battle and endure to the end so there are five things that every believer in the last day must survive the first is affliction the second is death the third is offense and betrayal the fourth is iniquity and the fifth is attrition that the warfare of the devil can weary you out and the only way you can get to that point where you have that level of stamina is when your pursuit of god is not for the things that he gives your pursuit of god becomes god himself everything god gives you makes you a trust fund if money comes to your hand you are a trust if property comes to your hand you are a trust what it means is that you are god's bank on the earth so when god wants to reach people he saves money with you you cannot bank on that thing because that thing just makes you a channel for god so when god wants to read the poor they say where is that two thousand kana city i gave you take it to the orphanage yes lord if you are like that you won't come to god for money because you know any money god gives you is not for yourself you are just a trust hope you know that the money unicef does not belong to unicef unicef is a trust so when they want to come to africa they go and fetch from that account how can you now be serving god for money when all the money god gives you is a trust there's a portion of it we enjoy but your goal is not enjoyment they say give tell them that are rich in this world not to be high-minded not trust in uncertain riches but to trust in the living god that give it to every man liberally that he may enjoy i'm not preaching to you the gospel of suffering but i'm telling you that there is a state of conviction that we attain that we know our pursuit of god is not for the things god gives it's for god himself and if we come to the point where we have to give up everything we will do it gladly i heard the story of the patriarchs of old that brought the gospel of christ to africa most of them were buried on these mountains you see but they never stopped coming they killed them the more they came they killed them they came the bible you are reading today many persons were born from the stake for the copy of the bible to make it to another day because sometimes in a, in a city only one man will have the copy of the bible and his goal is to run with it until he hands it over to another witness and when he hands it over most times they catch them and ask them where is that bible they will never speak and they will burn them alive but they will not cry their joy is that the bible had made it to another person's hand and today you hold that bible you don't know that that bible came to you swimming in the river of the blood of Matthias. and we come to church we don't know that church is an equipping ground we don't know that church is a ground where we wear our spiritual armory we think church is just a place where we come for social gathering we are not taught because we don't know that it's a warrior church God is raising if it is these Christians today that were the first Christians Christianity would have finished from this world because the believers I see today they will not die because of the Bible they will say okay don't worry let the Bible be born at least let me keep my family because they don't understand divine prosperity they don't understand the reward system of eternity i read about men that some of them were tied and they watched their family killed just for them to either change their confession or to reveal where the bible is so that they will destroy it but they kept quiet they killed their wives killed their children that's why you and i could call the name of jesus today do you think the next generation have hope if this is the kind of christianity we do because we don't know what god is doing